about y'all, but y'all, y'all just heard what Christina said. There's some deliverance in the room today. Somebody's been delivered. Now, I know everybody last night at 8 o'clock was watching their ball game. And when things went your way, you would put your hands together and you'd get a little shout. When things didn't go your way, you'd probably sit down like you're doing right now. But what I need somebody to do today, I'm not here to pump you up, but I just want you to understand we got a God we need to praise this morning. I didn't hear you in the back. I said we got a God we need to praise this morning. Now what I need everybody to do is just do this right here real big. Come on. Praise you for you are mighty, mighty too. Come on, singers, on one more, Lord, we praise you. Yes, we do. Praise you for you are mighty.
we are weak, He is strong. When we are empty, He is full. I'm speaking to somebody who feels weak. Empty. You've searched. You've searched from the ends of the world. you that Jesus has been with you the entire time. He wants to fill you up so that you can run over. Exude it with joy. With favor. He doesn't see you as less. He wants to make you more. Filled. Let's just raise our hands right now. This is me too. God, I want to be filled by you. He had also called us. I want to be filled by you, Jesus. He had also called us. called us. He had also called us. Fill me, Jesus, with a fire, a fresh wind, Jesus. Peace, Lord. A comfort, God, that only comes from you. Lord, a boldness for your word. A fire in my heart for worship. Just lift your hands and receive it. The glory of God is reigning now. He's filling you up now. Open your cup. Come on, take the lid off. Take the lid off.
said, Justin, there's a young man in this room who is living in condemnation and it's affecting every area of your life, even your praise. And this song was saying not just for God, but for you. 
because there is nothing that can take your hallelujah. Your past can't, your poor choices can't, the affair can't, the drugs can't, the perversion can't. Nothing can stop you from giving God praise. But there is one person who can, and that's you. And the enemy, the only tactic he has, he's called the accuser of the brethren, is he left, and the only material he has is old material. He brings up your past. He brings up your dirt. And you come to church, and he says, don't you lift your hand. I remember where you were six months ago. I remember how you cheated on your wife. I remember how you got drunk. I remember how you got high. You're not worthy to lift your hands. And the devil doesn't realize it. I'm not lifting my hands because I'm worthy. I'm lifting my hands because he's worthy. I'm praising because he's good. Not because I'm good. Not because I've had it all together. I'm praising God because He's been faithful when I haven't been faithful. He's been holy even when I haven't been holy. I want somebody in this room who is struggling with condemnation to lift your hands. Lift your hands and sing this song. Sing it and break it off of you. Break that condemnation off. Sing it. Sing it. Sing it. proud of you in the name of Jesus 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 the Lord bless you the Lord bless you I thank you that what you started, you're going to complete it. shake it. I'm going to move forward in just a second. The enemy is using the weapon of condemnation. See, some of 
people ask me sometimes, they say, Justin, do you know the kind of people that goes to turning point? They say, hey, you know, you got such and such, and y'all got such and such, and they did such and such. I don't understand why they're going and lifting their hands and why they're shouting, why they're dancing. But you got to understand, we're not here because of anything that we did. If the truth be told and the curtains will roll back on all of our lives, we all have things that we'd be ashamed of. We'd all have things that, man, if people knew what we did, we'd blush and say, Whoo! What I need you to understand, if you really want to give the devil a Maylock's moment, if you really want to just confuse the enemy, if you really want to just make the devil scratch his head, the devil was in heaven in a perfect place and couldn't praise God. Everything was perfect. Everything was great. And he couldn't praise God. He put it all about himself. And what confuses the enemy is when he sees people like you and me, when we're going through hard times, when we're struggling, when we're down, when we're fighting this and fighting that, but yet we choose to lift our hands and say, I'm going to praise you anyhow. Nothing can take my hallelujah. Nothing can stop me from praising God. The enemy just doesn't understand that. He doesn't understand how are they still praising God? How are they still worshiping Him? But what he doesn't realize is we've experienced something that he'll never experience. And that's redemption. That's forgiveness. That's, a, that's new beginnings, new creation in Jesus Christ. So one more time. I want you to sing it. I want you to declare it. Now don't hear me today. I don't care who you are. I don't care where. I don't care if you came here last and last night you were high as a kite. I thank God you're in this building. I know. I know there's some churches that kick you out. We're not gonna kick you out here. We're gonna welcome you because there's a God in this room who can transform your life. And I want you right where you're at. We're going to move on. But I want you to raise those hands. Confuse the enemy. Say nothing can take my hallelujah. Come on, sing it. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Can you give him one more big hand clap of praise all over this room? Tell your neighbor, say, nothing's going to take my hallelujah. Nothing's going to take my hallelujah. Nothing. Nothing. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Man, I'm, I'm thankful you're here, but I'm more thankful that the Holy Spirit is here. Because I can just sense the presence of the Lord in this room and I'm just so thankful that you're here to just experience Him here with us and just believe that He's going to bless you like only He can. But I want to thank you so much for being here in person and those who are joining us online. We're so incredibly thankful that you're here with us and, and ever how you're joining in, either in person or online, I'm thankful that you're here. And I want to encourage you to make sure you take out your cell phone. They're going to put a number on the screen behind me, and I want you to text the word WELCOME to 
2323. This is how we're connecting with people during, uh, you know, just these crazy times. You know, we're in, uh, it's just different times. I'll meet people and I don't know whether to shake or not shake their hand. Come on, somebody. Anybody else like that? I don't know whether, to, you know, I just, uh, I just say, hey, if you want to shake my hand, I'll shake your hand. But, you know, it's just different times that we're living in. But uh, we've got these digital connect cards. It'll send you a link. You click on that and you just put your name, your email, your phone number. Our team will follow up with you, and we just want to let you know how much we appreciate you just being here uh, either in person or maybe you're joining online. We're just super incredibly thankful that you're uh, worshiping with us and praying that you're blessed wherever you're, wherever you're watching us from. Or if you're here and you came, you know, I met uh, some folks in our VIP room just a few weeks ago. Uh, they had been watching, I think it was from uh, Richmond Hill or somewhere, Savannah. It was like an hour and a half ride, and they drove three hours round trip. They said it's good, it's good online, but we, they said it's got to be gooder in person. I said it's Loma, it's a real gooder in person. And so they drove three hours, I think it was a couple of Sundays ago, to be in service uh, with us and met them in the VIP room. And if it's your first time here, or maybe you've been coming for you know two or three Sundays, you've just been kind of you know kind of incognito and just kind of checking us out and saying, hey, I want to see if these people are. Are crazy or what? We are crazy. I'll just, I'll just tell you, we're crazy for Jesus. But, but if you're, if I haven't met you, I'd love to meet you after service in the VIP room. I'd love to put a name with a face, and we got a, just a, a small gift we'd like to give you, just to appreciate you for being here uh, in service with us. And, and I'm just super incredibly thankful that you're here. And listen, I want to cover just a few announcements that we're going to jump into worship, and then I got a, a message I want to share with you. The Lord put on my heart. But number one, I want to make mention, next Sunday is Baptism Sunday uh, here at Turning Point. If you have recently given your heart to Jesus or rededicated your life to Him, or maybe you're here and you say, I've never been baptized, uh, you need to take the next step and follow the Lord's commandment in water baptism. And next Sunday after service, we'll be baptizing here uh, at this campus. And I'd love to baptize you, but I need you to do something for me. There's a lot of prep work that goes on behind the scenes to get a baptism set up. They have to put the baptism pool, in the, and literally it's in like 400 pieces. It's a mobile one we purchased. They have to put that together, fill it up. Uh, certificates. There's a lot of things behind the scenes. So if you're planning on being baptized, make sure you go online. You can go to the website or you can go through the church app and let us register to be baptized so we can be prepared and uh, make sure things are set up. And I'd love the honor to just uh, baptize you. And, and I, I'm just super excited for those who take their next step and go public and water baptism so make sure if you're being baptized let us know next week so we can uh, be prepared if nobody you know signs up then we'll, we'll do it again we do it the last Sunday of every single month so make sure if you're being baptized we want to be prepared for you secondly uh, I want to share this with you especially to those who are in person we have uh, right now on this property in Jessup we have two 15 passenger vans um, that we've purchased and I'll be honest with you they they've been sitting there and we really noticed them during COVID-19 and and we really just been looking at like man them things need to be put to use to reach people and we need some van volunteers to drive those vans we have actually went to some of the large housing areas of Wayne County and passed out how many was it how many was it, it was like 200 flyers that we passed out to, to different places and we've even gotten permission from the managers or owner of the facilities that says hey y'all can pull the van here on Sundays and pick people up and we've actually right now there's I think two or three families that want to be picked up our problem is we have no volunteers to drive the vans and so if you're available on Sundays if you if you now listen you got to have a driver's license come on somebody but if you got a driver's license and you got a heart to reach people, literally, it's you would drive in on Sunday morning, pick them up, and then right when service is over, you'll drop them right off. If you got a heart and you want to serve and you want to make a difference, literally, right now as I'm talking to you, there are three families who need a ride. But we just can't pick them up because we don't have volunteers to, to take the van and go do it. And so if you're here and you say, I want, I want to help, I don't think anybody should not be able to come to church. 
everybody should be able to come. And and these are good, these are good. I know I know one or two of these families. They're good family. They're, one of them is a single mom. She is working. I think multiple jobs to provide. Them. And so I want to encourage you. If you're not involved, you say, "Hey, I want to drive that van." You you call five three zero seven two two eight. And uh, you, you ask for just one. Whoever answers the phone, you say, I want to drive that van. I want to help people, pick people up. We'll get you plugged in. We'll make that happen. Because I believe that these people are important. Anybody believe that with me? I believe it's important. And them vans don't just need to be sitting there. That ain't, that ain't being good stewards of God's, God's resources. We need to put them vans to use and put some butts in the seats and believe that lives are going to be changed. Amen, somebody? And then lastly, I want to make mention of this. Don't forget uh, all the men. Let me hear from the men in the house. Any men? Let me hear me. Oh, man. My God have mercy. <laughs> uh, men, I want to encourage you on Friday, October the 30th. I believe that's the last Friday of this month. That we're having the crew men's breakfast at 7.15 in the morning. That's the last Friday of this month, I believe. It's going to be at 7.15 in the morning. We're going to be meeting at Western Sislam. We're going to have a small devotion. Uh, we're going to have a time of fellowship just for all the guys to get together and hang out before you go to work or, you know, whatever you got happening that day. It is Dutch treats, so, you know, be prepared for that. But I want to encourage you to come together for some fellowship. We want to get all the men together and have a strong, you know, brotherhood, crew, just hanging out together, fellowshipping. So if you're a man, we'd love to have you for that. The last Friday, October 30th, 715, Western Season. We're going to pray. We're going to fellowship. And thirdly, we're going to eat. Come on, somebody. We're going to eat and uh, just have a good time. And I appreciate you so much for that. While you're preparing uh, to give, uh, we're preparing to pass the offering buckets beginning again the first Sunday of, of November. And while you're preparing to give, I know many during the last song of worship when we're singing, some will slip out and they'll put their tithes and offerings in the in the boxes we have by the door. Maybe you give text to give, or you know you give you know online or whatever how kiosk, whatever way you use to give. I want to I want to echo I want to remind you of this as you're preparing to give. Next Sunday, October the 25th. We're going to be receiving a special offering that we're calling the impact offering. This offering, 100% of what you give, is going to help fund all of the outreaches that we have planned over the next 10 to 12 months. We're already uh, putting things in place in December. I think I shared this with you that we're, we're in connections with some other places that we're going to try to provide over 300 boxes of food with 50 pounds of food in each box to families uh, Christmas gifts uh, outreaches not only here but in Brunswick our Brunswick campus is going to be participating in this offering and I want to encourage you to pray about it this week say God what would you have me to give in this offering maybe maybe it's you sacrificing you know a coffee trip or maybe you're sacrificing you know, going by Dunkin' Donuts, come on somebody, and getting some, whatever it is, I want to encourage you to pray about, say, God, what would you have me to give in this special offering? And 100% of what you designate towards that, we're going to use that to make a difference in outreach. Because if there was ever a time the church needed to rise up and get outside the four walls of the building, it is now. Come on somebody, it is now. And you're going to help us be able to do that. We've already got some rallies we're planning in different cities. We're going to go set up in some different parking spots, parking lots, wherever we can get. And we're just going to have church outside. And we're going to baptize people there on the spot. We're going to reach people right there. I figure, hey, if they won't come to us, we'll come to them and get them. Come on, somebody. We'll do it every how we got to do it. And... Your giving and the offering is going to help make these things possible. So I want to encourage you to be faithful. You've been faithful through all of this COVID-19 craziness. And I want to thank you for that. But I want to encourage you to pray about what God would have you to give. And, uh, and I know it's going to be a blessing as we make a difference together. But let's pray. We're going to sing one more song. And I'm going to share with you what the Lord's put on my heart. Father, in Jesus' name, 
I pray as we prepare to give, Lord, in this room, and even those online, God, right now, they're clicking to give. And I pray that we would not just go through the motions in giving. But Lord, number one, we would pray, we would ask you what you would have us to give. And number two, God, I pray that we give with gratitude. Recognizing that some people can't give like we can give. Some people don't have what we have. And the only reason we have what we have is because of you. And now in this offering and giving these tithes, we say thank you. Bless every gift and every giver. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen.
let me down You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down Anybody believe he's good today? Anybody believe he's good in the house? Amen. If you would stand with me all over the house, I want you to grab your Bibles and turn with me to Revelation chapter 22. Revelation chapter 22 and verse number 13. Revelation chapter 22 and verse 13. I know we've been in the middle of a series called Blessed to be a Blessing and I'm going to be honest with you. I had a whole another scripture, or a whole another sermon in the computer, and all that good stuff. And I just can't preach what I don't feel like God wants me to preach. <laughs> and I'm not afraid to come off the script. Come on, somebody. And I just, I just had this message just burn in me. And I just sat on this thing for a couple of days, and I just really feel like it's for somebody. I feel like it's for multiple people. And uh, so I'm just, I'm breaking away today, and uh, I want to share with the Lord's put on my heart. And I want to encourage you, if you're here today and you haven't been to our Brunswick campus and you're looking for something to do, I'd, I'd love to see you tonight at 5 p.m. Uh, I'm not going to be preaching this message there tonight. It's going to be totally different. Come on, somebody. So uh, if you haven't come and you say, well, I don't want to come because I'm going to hear that, no, I'm going to preach something totally different tonight. I'm preaching on the baptism of the Holy Ghost down there tonight. Come on, somebody. And uh, I'm believing people's going to be filled and refilled. We're going to pray in the Spirit down there. So it's going to be totally different from this morning. So if you're free, I'd love to have you. But Revelation 22 and verse 13, I want you to look at this one verse of Scripture. And Jesus said, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Don't miss that. He's Alpha and Omega. He's first and He's last. He's the beginning and He's the end. I want to speak to somebody just for a moment on this thought. If He's not first, He's going to be last. Father, in Jesus' name, speak to us. Lord, this is an opportunity to stand before Your people and to preach Your Word. And I'm praying today they don't hear Justin Mitchell. Hide me behind the cross and you speak to us. Speak through me. Lord, I know there's hundreds of people on the sound of my voice in person. Lord, even more online. And it would be impossible for me as one man to minister to so many people. So I'm asking you, God, to take your word, your spirit, and minister to every person here today. And I thank you. I thank you, Lord, that for somebody in this room who feels like maybe they missed the first opportunity, I pray today, let today be encouragement to bring hope again, to bring belief again, that you're not done with them. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen. And tell your neighbor, say, please pray for the Georgia Bulldogs. Please pray. 
for the Georgia Bulldogs. <laughs> it's amazing how much in life we strive to be first. I remember when I was little in school, in kindergarten, in first grade, and second grade, the highlight of my day was being first in line in school. Come on, somebody. We want to be first in line at school. We, I, I seen some of y'all on Facebook. I know they supposedly canceled Black Friday sales this year because of COVID nineteen or whatever. But you know, in past years, I, I've seen some of y'all crazy people at Walmart at one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning, and at Macy's and all that stuff. And y'all are doing everything you can to be first in line to the sales at Black Friday. We want to be first in the parking spot. Some of us want to be first to the buffet after church today. Uh, he likes a sermon. Come on, somebody. We want to be first to see the latest movie. The new iPhone 12 came out. Some of y'all want to be the first to buy the new iPhone. We want to be first in sports, first in football, first in baseball. Our culture and our society reveres being first. But I need you to understand something, that when it comes to our enemies, the thought is that we hit them first before they hit us. We even say things today like anything but first place is last place. We love being first because we think first is always best, but I want you to see in this one verse of Scripture that we read today, Jesus clarifies something in Revelation twenty two thirteen. 13. It's really something you ought to underline and take note of and not forget. But Jesus said that He is first and He is last. That He's not always first, but there's sometimes in your life that He's going to be last. He is the God of the first. He is the God who will show up at the beginning of a thing. But there are some times in your lives and in my lives that God doesn't always show up first. He waits till the last second to show up. Today you need to be encouraged that God is not stuck to one step or to one process, but He can move whenever He chooses to move in your life and in my life. And we need to understand and we do not need to lose hope and not to lose faith that if we don't see God move first, that means He's not going to move at all. But I've been serving God long enough to know that if He doesn't show up first, it means more than likely He's going to show up last. And when God shows up, last he does some of his best work in my life and in your life come on somebody say amen to that right there he can move first in your life if he wants to he can move first in your marriage he can move first in your finances he can move first in your health he can move first in the relationship with your children. As a matter of fact, there are some problems, there are some bad reports, there are some situations, there are some enemies, and there are some setbacks that were headed your way and you don't even know what happened because God showed up first and stopped it before it could ever even take place in your life. Come on, somebody. There were some car wrecks that you should have had that you didn't have because God showed up first and sent an angel to protect you. Y'all ain't going to help me in the room today. Day, there were some of you that demons and devils tried to come in your house first and you don't even realize that they tried to show up and attack your children, attack your marriage, attack your home, but you don't even know they came because the enemy, he, he tried to come in, but God showed up first to stop him and say, you can't come in this house, you can't touch these children, you can't have this home, you can't have this marriage. Come on, somebody. Anybody thankful for a God who will show up first, who will bless you first, who will protect protect you first he'll send his angels first he'll send his word first he'll make you a promise first and today I'm thankful on this Sunday for the times that God has protected me and I don't even know it I'm thankful for the moments where God showed up and handled things before I even showed up and he took care of it come on somebody we oh I know we praise God for what he's done we praise God for putting a roof over our head we praise God for answering prayers we praise God for taking a bad doctor's report and turning it into something good but sometimes we just need to take a praise break in church and give God a praise 
praise for the things we don't even know about. Come on, somebody. We just need to praise him that he showed up first. I want somebody to stand up on your feet, take 10 seconds, clap your hands, and give God a praise that he done stuff that you don't even know about. This is a praise that God handled it first. I am the beginning. I am the end. I am the first. Woo! Take your neighbor and say, God can be first. God can be first. But I need you to miss this because we focus on the times that God is first. But Jesus said, I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am the first and the last. I'm not just first, I'm last too. I'm the beginning and I'm the end. And we shout over the times that God is first. We're thankful for the moments that God is first. But Jesus makes it very clear I'm not just alpha in your life, I'm omega. I'm not just first, I'm also the God who will sometimes show up last. See, y'all get quiet, y'all don't like that kind of stuff. Y'all say God show up first, but Jesus said, no, I'm not always going to show up first because I am first and I am last. I am the beginning and I am the end. In other words, there are times when he says, if I don't show up first, it's because I have a plan that I'm going to show up last in your life. And listen, I know, I know this maybe don't make you want to run around the building and speak in tongues, but I need you to understand something. This is the hope that we have as believers that we can't count Jesus out just because he didn't show up first in your life. If you're looking at a situation in your life and you're saying, well, God didn't show up first, it must mean it's over. No, the devil is a liar. If he didn't show up first, you need to give God some time because not only is he always first, but sometimes he is last and sometimes he chooses not to come when you want him to come. But he shows up at the last minute second to bless you. The old folks used to sing, he may not come when you want him, but he'll be there right on time because he's an on time God. Y'all ain't going to help me. Yes, he is. He's never too early and he's never late. He's always right on time. And you understand this, Psalm 84, 11 said, For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. He bestows favor and honor. And catch this, it said, No good thing does he withhold from those who walk is blameless. God said, I will not withhold anything from those who walk is blameless. I'm not going to withhold no good thing from you. The word withhold means to refuse to give. But it also means to hold back for a certain time. In other words, God said, I won't withhold anything from you, but there are times I hold things back from you. I'm not going to keep anything good out of your life forever because I refuse not to give you what is good for you. But there are times, God says, that I have to hold things back for a certain season and a certain time because if I gave it to you at that exact moment, it would not be good for you. And so because I love you more than I want you to be happy, I'll withhold things to make sure you get them at just the right time. Yeah. Romans chapter 5 verse 6 said it like this. He said, you see, at just the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Jesus came at just the right time to die on the old rugged cross 
for your sins and for my sins. And listen, I'm like you. Sometimes I get frustrated with God. Because I've learned that we are a microwave generation, but we serve a crockpot God. Come on, somebody. We want Him to move in 30 seconds. We want Him to do the work in 30 seconds. But let me tell you something. Good things take time. Good things don't happen in 30 seconds. Y'all ain't going to help me in this room. My wife bought some chicken strips the other day. They were some Purdue, I think was the name of them, organic chicken strips, and she had them, and she left me with my children. Come on, somebody. Y'all pray for me. And she said, hey, I left y'all some chicken strips in the, in the freezer so when the kids get hungry, and they want to eat like 50 times a day. I don't know what's wrong with my children, but, but she said there's some chicken strips in the freezer, and if you want to you know, feed the kids, you can get those. And I got the package out, and it said, it said there's two primary methods of cooking these chicken strips. The first option is from the devil himself. It's called the microwave. And it said that you can put them chicken strips in that microwave and they'll be done in exactly 90 seconds. Or it said the preferred method is the oven. And that requires that you got to preheat the oven to 400 degrees, which feels like it takes 400 years. And then you got to let them things bake for like 15 to 20, not 90 seconds, 15 to 20 minutes. At 400 degrees. And so me, I tried the method from hell. And it was like chewing on a rubber ball. I mean, even my son put it in. <laughs> so then I went back and I said, okay, that was a failure. Let me try the preferred method. Come on, somebody. Because what's quick is not always right. What's easy is not always good. Ooh, I'm preaching better than y'all shouting today. Sometimes the good things take time. And you see, we are impatient people. And we say, God, I want you to move right now. I want you to bless right now. I want you to put my blessing in the microwave and turn it on for 90 seconds and give me my blessing. Give me my husband. Give me my wife. Give me my next blessing. And God says, listen, I'll do it if you want me to, but it ain't going to be what I really have designed for you. It's not my preferred method. My preferred method sometimes in your life is sometimes blessings take time. Sometimes I always don't come when you want me to come not because I'm trying to keep something from you but because sometimes blessing good blessings take a little time for me to get them where they need to be so you can handle everything I want them to do in your life y'all ain't gonna help me in the room today it's like Mary and Martha I call them the microwave sisters when their, when their brother Lazarus was sick, they said to Jesus, they said, Jesus, Lazarus is sick. You love him. We need you to come right now and heal him. That's microwave thinking. Just working because they ain't saying amen. We want you to come right now and heal him. And guess what? The Bible said Jesus heard that Lazarus was sick, and guess what? He didn't come. And Mary and Martha was like you and me. They got angry. They got mad. They said, God, we asked you for a blessing. You should have put it in your microwave and had it ready in 90 seconds. And Jesus said, you don't understand. I'm also first, but sometimes I'm last. I'm a good God. And I don't always come right when you want me to come. But I'm going to wait four days. I'm going to let things get a little bit worse. I'm going to let Lazarus die. I'm going to let you put his body in a tomb. Because I'm about to show you that not only am I a healer, but I'm a about to show you I am the resurrection I am the life I'm cooking up a miracle and I'm about to show you something you've never seen you've already seen me heal but you ain't never seen me raise nobody from the dead and I'm about to bring somebody back to somebody give God a praise that the reason he may be waiting to move in your life is he's about to show you another side of his glory that you've never seen before You see, many times, God lets the enemy make his move first. It was the enemy, Herod, who gave order for all boys 
two years and under to be killed because they were trying to stop Jesus from being born. That's why you need to understand. Hear me, precious. Hear me, don't miss this. If you don't hear anything else, I'll say, do not miss this. The reason why the enemy tries his best to attack you when you are young is because he believes he can stop or hinder what God wants to do in your life. I have talked to people by the hundreds, if not the thousands. And I will talk to them and they'll say, Pastor, I got hung up on this bad habit. You know, I'm, I'm either taking this, shooting this, drinking this, I'm living like this, whatever it is. And if you trace it all the way back to where it started, it didn't start in their 30s. It didn't start in their 40s. Nobody wakes up and says, oh, I just want to be hooked on this the rest of my life. No, for many people, it started way back when they were young. When a dad left them. When an uncle molested them. Y'all ain't going to help me in the room today. When they were raped, when they were molested, when they were hurt, when they were abandoned. And the enemy tries his best to attack the children when they're young. Because he says, if I can get to, if I can attack them first, I'll hinder what God wants to do. And we get frustrated because God doesn't always move first. Sometimes we get angry because the enemy moves and it looks like God's not moving. But what I want you to understand today is that God doesn't always move first because sometimes He saves the best for last. First Corinthians 2 verse 9 said, However it is written, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, nor has it entered into the human mind what God has prepared for those who who love Him. I came to tell somebody today that you need to stop counting God out just because He didn't move right when you wanted Him to move. Just because He didn't show up first doesn't mean He's not going to show up at all. Jesus said, I am first and I am last. I am Alpha and I am Omega. I am the beginning and I am the end. If I don't show up first, don't count me out in between because I'm the God that I'm going to finish what I started. I'm going to do what I'm going to told you I'm going to do, but I'm going to do it in my timing and not your timing because I'm eternal and you're bound in time and I'm the God that moves when I see fit to move in your life. I thought about it. You know, I want to share with you one thing before we go. But I was thinking about the story of David and Goliath. You know, the Bible said in 1 Samuel 17, I'm not going to read the Scriptures for the sake of time, but the Bible said in 1 Samuel 17, it said that Goliath moved first on the people of God. The enemy picked the fight. Not God's people. The enemy picked the fight. And the Bible said that the Philistine giant Goliath, he kept coming closer to David. It was the enemy picking and making a fight. It was the enemy who was saying, hey, I'm coming at you. I'm coming after you. God, your God's not moving, so I'm going to keep coming. Your God's not doing anything, so I'm going to keep attacking you. And finally, David said to the Philistine, he said, you come against me with a sword and a spear. But I come against you in the name of the Lord. And this day the Lord will deliver you into my hands and I'll strike you down and cut off your head. This very day I'll give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. Y'all, I'm about to run. That's why I put these shoes on. Jordan, come here. Brother Gladwin, come here. Gladwin is going to be David. Jordan, be stay right there. Stay right there. Stay right there. Yes, sir. You come up here, Gladwin. So catch this. Gladwin is David. And the enemy, Goliath, is picking a fight. 
And Goliath, the Bible said, kept coming closer. Just take one step. He kept coming closer. He take one step, he come closer. And you would think David's prayer should have been, God, come help me. The enemy is coming closer and closer and closer. But God said, no, 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 David, I, I'm not just the God of the first, I'm the God of the last. I always come at just the right time. Y'all ain't going to help me in the room today. And if you'll go study and you'll go look at the map of what Bible theologians say, God was letting Goliath come off from his side into the middle of the battlefield. And the reason why God was letting Goliath come in the middle of the battlefield was because God wanted to let the whole world see what he was about to do in the life of David. Come on, somebody. Y'all ain't going to help me in the room today. Because if God would have been first and took him out on Goliath's side, then the only ones that would have seen Goliath go down was Goliath's team. But God said, I want the whole world to see what I'm about to do. I want the whole world to see I'm a deliverer. I want the whole world to see that I'm greater than any weapon you may be up against. I want the world to see that I'm greater than any giant you may be facing. So I'm going to delay. I'm going to delay. I'm going to look like I'm late, but I'm really on time. I'm not going to come first I'm going to come last because I'm going to get Goliath in the right position so that when David slings his stone the whole world is going to see Goliath go down and everybody is going to praise the God of David come on somebody give your God a praise if you're thankful he may not come when you want him but he'll be there right on time because he's an on time God. Maybe God let you get in the predicament you're in. Because he's about to do something in your life, not just so you can see it, but so everybody in your world can see it. And say, look what the Lord has done. I came to tell you that if He doesn't move first, He may be moving last because God will get the most glory not coming early, but coming a little later. So that's what Jesus said. He said, I am the first and I'm the last. I'm the first and I'm the last. But I want to leave you with this one last principle before we go. Matthew 20, verse 16. Jesus said, For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. He agreed to pay them a denarius for the day and he sent them into his vineyard. And about nine in the morning he went out and he begins to inspect all of those who were working. He paid them according to whatever was right. And in verse 16, Jesus makes this incredible statement. He said, the last will be first, and the first will be last. The last will be first, but the first will be last. We serve a God, hear me now, that if life, poor decisions, pain, hurt, divorce it can have a way of making you feel like it knocked you all the way last and you look around at your friends and your family and say man I'm so far behind everybody's moving so much further than I am all my friends are married here I am still single they got children I don't have children I'm, I'm lonely I'm hurt but hear me if you submit your life to Jesus he has a way of taking things that were last and making it first. David was last in line in his family. Did y'all hear me? When the prophet Samuel came to anoint the next king, 
His father invited everybody except David. But God said, I'm the God that even when people make you feel last, if you just trust me, if you just walk with me, even if you don't get invited to the party, I'll come find you. And David went from last to he was anointed the next king over Israel. He went from last to first because he followed God, because he remained faithful to God, because he'd done what God told him to do. And everyone standing, no one leaving. I don't know who this is for. I don't know who God changed my heart for. I had something totally different planned. But I just couldn't shake this. I felt like there's somebody that would be here today who says I'm a little bit angry with God because He didn't come when I wanted Him to come. I was believing for a microwave blessing, but Pastor, maybe I'm learning that what God has prepared for me next is taking some time. Or maybe God is drawing my enemy out a little bit longer so that he can take it down and the whole world can see that he is God. But if you're in this room and you're frustrated, you say, I got a promise I'm believing for and I feel like I missed it. I feel like it's too late. I've been believing. But today this message is spoken to me and I believe that if God didn't show up first, he's going to show up right on time. Even if I think it's the last second, the last minute, He's going to show up at the right time in my life. He's going to bless. He's going to move. He's going to do what only He can do. If that's you, I want you to step out of your seat and I want to pray for you. If you're in this room and you say, Pastor, I need to keep hope. I need to keep believing. I don't need to lose hope. I'm frustrated, but I'm not going to throw in the towel. God hadn't moved when I wanted Him to move. I I was believing for a microwave blessing, but maybe I need to just remember God's cooking something up that's good and it's taking some time. I want you to come. I want you to step out of your seat. I want you to be ashamed. I've been there right there with you. This message spoke to me as much as speaking to you. I've been there. I've been angry with God. I felt like it was too late, but I've had to learn that He withhold no good thing from those who love Him. So if he's withholding it right now, it doesn't mean she's not good right now. When you come, I want you to raise your hands. I'm coming to pray for you. Sing it, Pastor Jordan. Come on, raise those hands. My hallelujah, nothing can take. My hallelujah, shadows will fade. Yes, darkness will break. Yes. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Nothing can take my hallelujah. Nothing can take my hallelujah. Shadows will fade. Darkness will break. I'll keep on singing your praise. Nothing can take my hallelujah. Nothing can take my hallelujah. Shadows will fade. Darkness will break. Keep on singing your praise. Nothing can take my hallelujah. Nothing can take my hallelujah. Shadows will fade. Darkness will break. I'll keep on singing your praise. Nothing can take my hallelujah. Nothing can take my hallelujah. Shadows will fade. Darkness will break. Keep on singing your praise Oh, what can take away
that he's first and he's last. He's never late, he's never early, but he's right on time. And he will move in my life so in such a way that he gets the glory. thankful God's going to move and he's going to get the glory I got to say this and I'm going to be gone the Lord said there was a David anointing on your life and he said that you're in a unique season of your life that even called you by surprise says the Lord and he said do not mistake isolation as rejection says the Lord the Lord said, isolation for you is preparation for what He's going to do in your life. I hear the Lord saying, revival coming to her family. And He said, I'm about to use you in greater ways than you've ever been used. And He said, I'm drawing your enemies out. Just as I've done with Goliath, I'm doing with you, Casey. Because I want everyone to see that I am the God who is faithful. And he said, do not mistake this season. Because I am preparing you for greater. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus. Shataboho shata. Heraboko shana mahaya. Hitarabo shata. Don't you get frustrated. God's got you right where He wants you. Jesus. 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 Come on, if we're going to do it, let's end this thing right. Can we take 30 seconds? Can we put them hands together before we go? Can we bless Him? Can we praise Him? Come on. Give him one big shout of praise all over this room. Glory to God. Listen, I love you. Hey, don't forget, if you're new here, I'd love to meet you in the VIP room. Thanks for hanging out with us. Secondly, if you're looking for something this afternoon, come hang out with us in Brunswick. Y'all think y'all crazy? Them Brunswick people, they real crazy. Come on, somebody. I'm not preaching this message tonight. I'm going to be preaching on the Holy Spirit. Love for you to come be with us. But I pray you have an incredible afternoon. And listen, don't get frustrated just because he didn't show up first. He is first and he is last. Somebody say amen. I love you. Shake two or three hands. I'll see you tonight, hopefully. God bless y'all.